This is the all new Ubuntu 25.04 Plucky Puffin and this is hands down the most feature packed Ubuntu release we have had in a long time. I have been playing with it since the beta dropped and trust me, this release has a lot going on. From GNOME 48 with buttery smooth animations, a huge gaming performance upgrade with NT-Sync technology, smart wellness feature baked right into the system, to high end display tech like HDR and dynamic boost. Ubuntu 25.04 is a seriously solid update. This feels like Ubuntu is stepping into a whole new phase and I'm loving it. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Starting off with the biggest change that we see in Ubuntu 25.04, we get GNOME Desktop version 48 here. And GNOME 48 is an absolutely loaded update in itself. Visually, GNOME is introducing completely new default fonts. But since Ubuntu uses its own Ubuntu fonts, we won't be seeing the newer Advaita Sans fonts here. But this update is all about under the hood improvements. This time around, performance boosts have been given a special priority. Explicit sync tech, HDR support and some other really cool things make their way into GNOME this time. There have been polishing touches here and there. GNOME 48 has better valence support now with a lot of legacy X11 baggage deprecated with this version. GNOME also supports triple frame buffering natively now. Ubuntu had already implemented this tech in its version of GNOME but it was not available in upstream GNOME till now. But since GNOME is natively bringing it now, Ubuntu 25.04 will switch to GNOME's implementation of triple frame buffering. This tech makes the display look butter smooth, especially in things like activities overview animations and the app grid and other high graphics demand situations. Yeah, I'll get to the news that you've been waiting for. Ubuntu 25.04 comes with the all new NT Sync driver, which is showing tremendous performance boost for Windows games running on Linux via Wine or Proton. Traditionally, Wine used to emulate Windows synchronization mechanisms in user space which introduced severe bottlenecks with modern multi-threaded games. The new NT-Sync driver addresses this by implementing synchronizations directly within the Linux kernel which results in significant reduction of overhead and much more precise emulation of Windows synchronization behaviors. This improvement results in smoother gameplay experience with reduced stutter and latency. And we are not talking about minimal performance gains here and there. You can test this on your computer and the FPS improvements are substantial. People are seeing up to 600% increase in Dirt 3. Yeah, you heard that right. 600%, not 6, not 60, 600% improvement in frames per second. Resident Evil 2 is showing around 200% FPS improvement, Forza Horizon 5 around 50%, Call of Juarez has doubled its FPS. Yeah, the results we are seeing here are big. The Linux community, as you might expect, has gone absolutely bonkers with this thing. So Ubuntu 25.04 is going to be a big update for Linux gamers. Gnome 48 introduces the new well-being panel in this settings application. This is designed to help you monitor and manage your screen time. The well-being feature in Gnome lets you see your daily device usage times and set daily limits to promote healthier digital habits. You are going to see screen time data for the last few weeks here and you can set screen time limits as well. Once you hit that limit, you will see a notification informing you to stop using the device. You can also turn on this grayscale option where once the time limit is hit, your screen loses all colors and just becomes grayscale. This is something that I really care about. In this distracted age where billions of dollars are being poured into making us more hooked, more lost in our screens, features like these give us the power to make a conscious decision to actually live our lives and not just spend it staring at screens. I think maybe in the future they should also provide a hard limiting option that maybe cuts off your device access completely once that time limit is hit. I think time limits for specific apps or even websites would also be a great addition here. Obviously this is the first iteration but this is a phenomenal start and I'm sure this is going to enable people to have healthier relationships with their computer. We also get eyesight reminders and movement reminders here that remind you to take a quick walk around and maybe stretch a bit. I have found huge benefits by utilizing Android's well-being feature and I just love that I'm going to get that self overwatch and just a reminder to look away from my screen on my computer as well. Ubuntu's installer has gotten several announcements this time around focusing on improving the user experience especially for those setting up dual boot systems with Windows. Everything has been made more transparent now with clearer messages indicating the presence of other operating systems on your device. Installation scenarios such as install into free space and erase and replace an Ubuntu installation have been refined. Yeah, the installer now allows you to replace an existing Ubuntu installation directly. 
This means reinstallation process is much more streamlined now. And now I think this also opens up the possibility for performing a cleaner update. And for the dual booters out there, the installer now offers improved handling of advanced partitioning and encryption. And for users with BitLocker enabled Windows installations, it's now possible to install Ubuntu alongside those BitLocker partitions. The welcome screen has also been redesigned to make it easier to jump into the installation. The keyboard layout section has been decluttered by putting the less used variants into separate drop downs. And you can also change between light and dark themes directly in this installer itself. The installation summary page has been improved, making it easier to quickly scan the installation summary before proceeding. The installation experience has always been one of Ubuntu's strongest selling points from the very beginning, and it has played a huge role in its widespread adoption. It's nice to see Ubuntu experimenting and continuously refining the installation experience. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. You'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the vEditor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description, do check it out. Next up, we have apt 3.0, a significant update to the core package management tool that powers Ubuntu. The biggest change is the revamped command line output. Output is much cleaner now using colors and neat columns for easier reading. It's less cluttered, the progress bar looks modern and cleaner. You don't even think the older way of displaying text had any problems until you have a look at this. Apt 3.0 uses colors strategically and the formatting, the proper use of spacing and columns, it makes a huge difference in the readability. Just a glance and you get what's going to happen here. Under the hood, there's a new smarter dependency resolver that's designed to handle tricky conflicts better than the old one and it's stricter during standard upgrades. Also, the auto-remove command cleans up unused packages a bit more thoroughly now. The new apt even warns you about potential disk space issues before you start installing or upgrading. Apt 3.0 modernizes the internals as well as the visuals. For old schoolers like me who still prefer using the terminal to install software on Ubuntu because we snap at snaps, this is a phenomenal update. Ubuntu 25.04 also brings significant advancements in high dynamic range or HDR support. This is said to enhance the visual experience of users with compatible displays. In the settings application, under display, if you have a HDR supported monitor, you'll get a dedicated option to enable or disable the HDR mode. This HDR mode should be treated as a very initial introduction to it, but support is confirmed for AMD GPUs and Nvidia driver version 550.54 onwards, and we are getting version 560 here. Right now, HDR support on browsers is very limited and I don't think any major browser for Linux lets you view HDR content on the web, but you can use the MPV media player to watch your own HDR content. This is a very big news for us display enthusiasts because in the near future, we will see significant improvements in the visual quality of the desktop experience. We'll be getting enhanced colors and contrast, sharper and cleaner display, and for a long time, HDR was mostly a feature on Windows and Mac OS. You could see how certain displays looked so good on those systems. With this, Ubuntu 25.04 is going to level the playing field by offering us the same kind of advanced display quality. This update too has trickled down from GNOME 48. Ubuntu 25.04 introduces native support for NVIDIA's Dynamic Boost technology and this is enabled by default. This technology enhances performance by intelligently reallocating power between the CPU and GPU bi-directionally based on real-time workloads, optimizing system efficiency as well as performance. I've always felt that Ubuntu cares about people with NVIDIA hardware. Does anybody else feel that? Let's quickly dive into NVIDIA Dynamic Boost tech. Normally, the CPU and GPU in your computer each have their own fixed power budgets. The CPU gets allocated a certain amount of power to use and the GPU gets a certain amount of power to use. But there are situations when the CPU might be chilling while the GPU is sweating buckets during a heavy render or vice versa. That's where Dynamic Boost steps in. It dynamically reallocates unused CPU power over to the GPU in real time giving it extra watts to crank through those frames. And this can result in performance gains of up to 10% under certain workloads. And on newer supported GPUs, this can work in reverse as well. Power can be rerouted from the GPU to CPU and that's gonna give the CPU a boost. And all this will be handled by AI. Dynamic Boost Tech will only work when connected to a power source and will boost up things like gaming, rendering and other tasks where CPU and GPU have to work in tandem. 
We see GNOME 48's notification grouping or stacking feature in Ubuntu 25.04. What this does is, it basically organizes notifications from the same application into expandable stacks within the notification drawer. This streamlines the user interface by reducing clutter and making it easier to manage multiple alerts from a single source. You click on the stack to expand it, providing quick access to detailed information. Then you can collapse them back. Previously, when you got multiple notifications from the same app, only the latest three notifications were written and the others were discarded here. And the jumbled up and mixed up notification stack meant it was very easy to miss out on important things. This new mechanism gives you a quick overview of what needs attention and then in your own time you can click on the stacks and take actions. The thing with this system is it lets you ignore or postpone notifications from particular apps at that moment. In Ubuntu 25.04, the long time standing document viewer Evans is swapped out bringing in a fresh application called Papers for handling your PDF and other documents. If you're angry, you gotta remember that it's not Ubuntu that's killing Evans, but it's in fact GNOME that has made this change. Although you'll just continue seeing Papers listed as Document Viewer in your apps menu, this switch is all about bringing a modern, refreshed feel to how you view your documents. It's designed to be more user-friendly right out of the box, leveraging newer technologies compared to Evans. Papers is created using the latest libadweta framework and as such brings advantages like high DPI support and modern UI elements. Parts of the codebase like the UI widgets have been written in Rust to improve the memory safety and maintainability. Papers also has GPU acceleration support so things like page transitions in presentation mode look super smooth. Papers also has a good set of annotation tools and provides markup and note taking functionality for documents here. Papers goes toe to toe with Evans as far as features are considered, but it does shed the legacy technical debt that Evans had, and it aligns with GNOME's push towards providing a modern and contemporary user experience. Ubuntu 25.04 introduces BeaconDB as the new backend for location services, replacing the now retired Mozilla Location Service. BeaconDB is an open source, privacy focused geolocation service created to estimate the user's location using Wi Fi access points cell tower data and as a last resort, IP addresses. And because of the technique used here, accuracy isn't always going to be spot on, especially if you're in the middle of nowhere. But for daily stuff, it does get the job done. Things like night light which adjusts the screen temperature based on the time of the day, automatic time zone updates, local weather, that's all going to be powered by BeaconDB now. BeaconDB obfuscates the collected data and it's collected only if you explicitly opt in. This is not perfect, but I think it's a solid foundation for what it's meant to be. Ubuntu 25.04 is powered by the Linux kernel 6.14 and this specific version brings many new updates. The anti-sync driver that we saw earlier being the biggest update in this kernel. In addition, we also get uncached buffered IO support that reduces RAM pressure and improves performance on large read-write operations x86 TLB flushing optimizations are also included in this kernel that improve the CPU and context switching performance. And this delivers smoother performance in multi-threaded workflows. AMD P-state drivers are also improved to deliver better power efficiency without sacrificing speed. So people with AMD hardware are going to benefit from this. This kernel also brings touch-ups in how GPU memory is handled by adding fine-grained control over GPU memory usage across processors. And this also prevents one process from hogging GPU RAM, ensuring balanced performance across applications. And like with every Linux kernel, more code is written in Rust now. GIMP 3, the latest major update to the creme de la creme of image editing on Linux is available with Ubuntu 25.04. GIMP 3.0 is created using GTK 3 and this has resulted in a more refined user interface. The huge deal about this release is the introduction of non-destructive editing or NDE. This feature allows you to apply and modify filters without permanently altering the original image. This is not available in GIMP 2.0 versions. The text tool has undergone significant improvements allowing the application of styles such as outlines, shadows and bevels while keeping the text editable. GIMP 3.0 also extends compatibility with various file formats macOS ICNS icons, Windows CUR and ANI cursors, and many other additional formats are now supported. Handling of PSD files, that is Photoshop files, has been improved with better compatibility. Layer management has also been improved, and GIMP 3 also performs better. Thanks to GTK3, it has native Wayland support. All these enhancements, improvements, and updates contribute to a more seamless and premium image editing on GIMP 3. 
For developers, Ubuntu 25.04 brings many updates to its development tool chains, giving us access to the latest programming language features and optimizations. GCC 14, Python 3.13, LLVM 20, Rust 1.84, Go 1.24 and OpenJDK 21 with access to OpenJDK 24 and 25 also are available here. You gotta love how Ubuntu gives you the best versions of toolchains in every development language while still making other versions available. Cool. Before installing Ubuntu 25.04, I had just downloaded and installed Arch Linux. So one thing that absolutely stuck out for me is the download size. Ubuntu 25.04 gives you an ISO file that weighs 6 GB. That's large. Not just by Linux distro standards, by operating system standards itself. We have crossed the Windows ISO file size here. But this is just something that you notice. I don't think this will have any negative issues for the majority of people. Yeah, if you are planning to burn it onto a DVD, this no longer fits. Yeah, this can be really inconvenient for people who have slow or unstable internet connections or data cap plans. But for most people, this is actually a good thing. Ubuntu 25.04 ISO file is so heavy because it supports a wide range of devices immediately after installation because it comes bundled with a wide range of drivers, both new and old. Even things that can be a hassle such as NVIDIA drivers are on the ISO file itself so you don't need to mess with that later on. I have NVIDIA GPU so I'm okay with this, I appreciate this. But remember that just because the ISO is heavy, it doesn't mean the installation is going to be bloated. You still have that option for a minimal installation with this. I understand that this ISO comes bundled with everything as to provide a more complete out of the box experience and I do appreciate that because that's what Ubuntu is known for. But still. I can't help but compare the ISO file size of this to something like Fedora which fits in half the size of this. But still, this is trivial for most people. Ubuntu 25.04 has a really cool code name. I really like it. Plucky Puffin. It continues its tradition of visual storytelling through its wallpaper design. The official wallpaper features a stylized puffin set against a deep elegant purple background with very intricate textures and views. But there is one thing here, the contrast is not that great. They should have improved it. As usual, Ubuntu has selected additional wallpapers through a community competition and these are good too. For me, the excitement and the curiosity of having to wait to look at the new wallpaper in a new Ubuntu, I think that it will never fade away. Ubuntu 25.04 Plucky Puffin really delivers a fresh experience across the board. It's not just one or two standard features this time. It feels like a comprehensive upgrade touching almost every part of the system. From visual polish to major performance upgrades, this release is absolutely loaded. I'm a religiously LTS guy, but this version, it's really tempting me and it has convinced me to give this interim release a go. Ubuntu 25.04 is bold, thoughtful and Plucky Puffin really lives up to its name. The download link is given in the description below. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also leave me a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in leveling up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero in the shortest amount of time possible. You'll be using Linux Clicker Pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out the top 15 hottest hacks that will supercharge your Linux desktop's performance to the next level and truly unlock your Linux. It's got some really cool tweaks, so definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Techs, signing out. Out.